I say what ho, this is Brian, call me a simple guy who lives from day to day gardener, coming to you from the ray of sunshine that melts my frown and blows my blues away in scenic Hesper, Ontario. And you are listening to Ramble on Radio, episode number 66, one six away from the number of the beast. We are one six away, too bad, it's it's, it's the, uh, um, or good thing I suppose, it, it's, it's the tough six. <laughs> it's it's the big six, um, because I believe after once we hit episode six six six, the uh, the entire episode will implode, and I'm gonna have to start over again. Um, uh, as a Genesis podcast, as a Phil Collins podcast, actually, it would have to start over us. So let's. Uh, so we're at sixty six. We're a long way away from that six six six. Thank goodness. Uh, and this is Ramble on Radio, the only dedicated Led Zeppelin podcast, not Phil Collins, the only dedicated Led Zeppelin podcast on this or any other known internets. Be sure to go to rambleonradio.com for all your Led Zeppelin news and any links I mentioned during the show. You can subscribe to Ramble on Radio through iTunes. If you go to iTunes, leave a review. Um, give a star, give three stars, give five stars, and it just it helps with the it's product placement. It helps with the, the, the uh, podcast's placement. Um, you can go to Spreaker, follow uh, Ramble on Radio on Spreaker. Um, same thing, helps with placement. And check it out at Ramble on Radio on YouTube. Also, I am Brian Dammit on YouTube, but that's just the, the audio. It comes from Spreaker, and I can't seem to turn it off. But if you go to Ramble on Radio, I've had the last couple up. I'm recording again, I'm videoing again um, on YouTube. And um, um, that's and follow Ramble on Radio on Facebook. Facebook. The Facebook page was a bit alive this week. Uh, some stuff going on. Go to Google Plus. You can also see the YouTube video on Google Plus. Apparently, it's all owned by Google now. Um, I think everything's you know YouTube and 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 well Google's owned by Google and then uh, um, Google Plus and your car uh, and I believe they hold your mortgage and um, uh, there's something else that's Google. But yeah, Google's everything now. Right? So uh, it, it's getting crazy out there. Um, uh, and also go to go to Twitter, follow at Ramble on Blog on Twitter, um, and uh, you know talk to me, have a conversation with me. Uh, like I said, the Facebook page has been fairly alive this week. Um, one of the points I wanted to get to, um, 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 uh, Zep Cowboy. Go to Zep Cowboy. I you know I'll have to link up to it. Zep Cowboy at blogspot blogspot.com I believe is Wyatt Wyatt is um uh, he's been a listener since episode one he's like after episode one he emailed me and I've actually known through Led Zeppelin the email list and stuff I've known Wyatt since before I even did this um but he pointed out that uh, I, I used the phrase uh, Celtic this week and uh, he went and checked it out whether it was Celtic or Celtic and uh, my only defense, and the truth is, I'll go both ways in this. Uh, sometimes, some weeks I'll say Celtic, some weeks I'll say Celtic. I can tell you that my grumpy Irish father, who, um, uh, if he doesn't know it, it's not meant to be known. Let's put it that way. He's, um, um, you know, if you, if you want to see what he looks like, go to the dictionary, look up know-it-all. Um, that's my grumpy Irish father. And he will assure you that nobody says it in Ireland, that... Um, um, in fact, only those stupid Americans, stupid, stupid, stupid Americans, um, would dare say Celtic, that it's, it's a North American thing, it's not an Irish thing, that the Irish would never, ever, would not know what you were talking about, uh, etc., etc. Um, if you actually want an entertaining Saturday night, bring a bottle of whiskey to my house, one of the weekends when my dad is down visiting, uh, he likes Irish, Canadian whiskey, not Irish whiskey, in case you're thinking, um, he doesn't drink Guinness either. There's a reason they kicked him out of Ireland. Uh, but, uh, by the way, battery's going down really bad on this uh, video. We may not get much. Um, in which case, I have to find a new solution. I'm not buying batteries every week. Um, yeah, so come on down, bring the whiskey, get him a couple, and get a couple in them with uh, some rye. Two, maybe three. Uh, maybe start with two. And then, uh, then 
tell them, no, you disagree. You think it's Celtic. And uh, it, it'll be an entertaining hour, I promise. <laughs> so that's, I tend to go Celtic. I, I actually think Celtic. I hear it Celtic all the time, or, you know, on the radio and stuff. Um, but I, I've had it a bit beat into me Celtic. So I kind of intentionally went Celtic uh, when I talked about it last week. And, uh, and, and it's funny because I didn't think about it. Oh, well, maybe it's Celtic. I, I, I know, I'm not sure exactly what the honest the way it's supposed to be. I just tell you why I go that way. The next time we're talking about it, I could very well say Celtic. Don't email me and start going on uh, and telling me I, was, <laughs> I just use both. I do. Um, uh, it, it's one of those things that, you know, I, I never heard Celtic until the 90s. Uh, it was always Celtic as far as I knew. I'd never even heard of it. And I was assuming it was one of those newer interpretations of words that we get into these days. Like, um, the, the one that's always struck me is condoms or now condoms. Um, and Adidas shoes. When I was a kid, we had Adidas shoes. Now they're Adidas. Uh, and same with Celtic Celtic. I was assumed it was one of those things. Um, but anyway, there's my answer for that. Um, but yes, pitch in. Uh, it, it, there's a conversation going on about it right now on Facebook. Go over to Facebook, uh, join the conversation. What do you think? Is it Celtic or Celtic? Um, should I be shot for saying Celtic or raised on the shoulders? Uh, and promise you, my dad would tell you it's one or the other. It's you know. Uh, so we entered with little Maggie um, from Glastonbury, according to Classic Rock magazine today or yesterday. That is the world premiere of Robert Plant's. Uh, little Maggie never played it before. You didn't hear it last week when he released the video. Um, you did not hear it if you went to the New Orleans Jazz Festival. Never happened. Glastonbury. That's where they premiered the new track, Little Maggie. Um, truth is, he's played it about 10, 15 times already. He, he played it in April at uh, New Orleans Jazz Festival, and he's been playing it ever since. So, uh, But that was Little Maggie from Glastonbury. Um, if you were lucky enough, you caught... Um, you caught Robert, uh, Glastonbury set this week. Um, it, it's been on BBC, recorded it, broadcast it. They have it on, on their player or BBC player, but those of us outside of the country can't watch it. Somebody put it on YouTube. It's already been taken down, so on and so forth. So I haven't seen it, but if you live in certain parts of the world, you can see it. Um, and, uh, the other one was, uh, again, go to the Facebook page. There is a link to an interview, fairly long interview, at an Irish radio station down in Dublin. Um, and the guy's a bit funny. Yeah, Irish guys will say anything, right? And he, he says a few things. He actually takes Robert a bit to task. Not a lot. Not does not hard on him. But, uh, like, Robert goes on about, well, I like changing the songs around. You know, kind of like Bob Dylan... Uh, and the guy says, oh, I got to tell you, I hate what Bob Dylan does. <laughs> then he says, I like the way you do it. But uh, you know the difference, Robert? Hey, Robert, it's me. Me and you right here looking at the screen. You know the difference between you and Bob Dylan? Bob Dylan wrote the music and the words. You change the other guy's part and keep yours the same and call it the same song. You reinterpret the other musician's part. Um, if you played Black Dog and sang different words... Um, that would kind of be reinterpreting your part, you know, but you're reinterpreting John Paul Jones's lick or Jimmy Page's lick. Bob Dylan wrote both the music and the song, so it's fair game when he does whatever the hell he wants with it. Um, that's, to me, that's, um, there's a certain rudeness about the way he just shifts the other guys. His part never changes, but uh, but he's not a jukebox, and, oh, I wasn't going to go on a Robert ref either. I was not, This was not in the plans today. Um uh, and I'm actually not, it's a good little interview, and he's, he's you know, um, yeah, he handles the question of, you know, playing this album stuff. Um, he handles it, right? he's re and he really does say, look, you know, I, I spent the 70s, I considered the musical responsibility in the 70s, I did that, uh, now I'm having fun. He actually kind of says that, and I think, it's you know, that's that's fair. Um, um so, but it's a good interview. It's a long interview. He talks about the new album. He talks about playing the Zeppelin. He talks about doing the festival circuits. He talks about it all. Um, so it's it's worth going. Go to the Facebook page. Uh, it's linked to there. Uh, I will try to remember to uh, repost it onto Twitter. I'll, I'll I'll tweet it on. I'll tweet it on the Twitter. Um, and I'll even try to remember to get over 
to the Google Plus. For those of you who follow on Google Plus, uh, I will try. All right, this week is Led Zeppelin 3. Didn't get to it last week. We're going to get to it this week. There, my friends, is the music book. I have been learning some songs off it. Um, um, and really kind of relearning some songs off it at this stage. Uh, some stuff I learned years ago, and but learned pro improperly or whatever. I also have, for your edification, the 8-track. And I have decided I'm going to do... Um, a podcast on set list changes between eight tracks and albums because I have all, I think all the eight tracks and this is another one is different so there's differences cassette got the cassette I have about four cassettes we'll talk cassettes when we do the differences and of course an original LP not original mid 70s mid to late 70s LP uh, gate fold as you can see the thingy spins I'm gonna get that close and I'm you know if you're not on YouTube this is the boring bit uh, uh, and in rougher shape than Led Zeppelin 2, I think. Oh, boy, I played the hell out of this. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're, we're going to talk about um, how I played the hell out of this, a poor album. And it owes me nothing. I can tell you that right now. And I look forward to getting a new vinyl copy in about four weeks when I have a birthday. Uh, I know you're all sitting at home wondering, what should we get you for the birthday? Pitch in the box set uh, for Zeppelin 3. That is nice. That would do it. Um, <laughs> have I said this before? I used to, I used to, my first podcast that I listened to was Drew and it was a husband and wife thing. And uh, something in Drew, Drew and somebody. And uh, anyway, for a while it was interesting and they were kind of a little nuts. But then I realized two things happened. One is I realized they weren't just kind of a little nuts on the on the podcast. They were nuts. They were Looney Tunes, um, as in somebody should get these people help. Kind of cr just nuts. Um, and I think it was, and I think I've said this before. I think it was at Christmas. They did a podcast and they did a Yule podcast because they don't celebrate Christmas. They celebrate Yule on the twenty first. And how do you celebrate Yule? Well, with presents and a tree, and you decorate the tree, and you put lights in the house, and you, you, see, you could either celebrate Christmas or don't celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate Christmas. Then don't. But and you realize they were being serious, and and that's at that point I thought these guys are squirrely. Um, but the other thing was they got into they discovered you could make a list on Amazon of stuff you want, and people could buy the stuff for you um, without having to know your address and stuff, and they started. I mean, the podcast became freaking practically begging for stuff, and they spent half their podcast just talking about stuff people had sent them off the list and whatnot, and it became this really kind of... And I uh, I very quickly turned off after that. It, it just became uh, a buy-me-stuff fest. So I, I, I joke. I'm I, What I'm getting at is I'm kidding. Don't don't think, uh, oh, I like that podcast. I better go buy him Led Zeppelin three the box set. I have a family for that. And they say they love me. you got to give them a chance once a year to prove it. Um... So I haven't, I haven't got CDs on this. Unlike the other two, I have not got the CDs for Zeppelin 3. I have not got the LPs. Uh, around here, I was at the store today. They still haven't got the LPs. I have Led Zeppelin 1, the LP, the deluxe edition, coming from my daughter for Father's Day. They haven't had it in the store yet. They have not. They have the box sets. So up here in Canada, we're not getting it at all. The vinyl. Um, and this is HMV. It's a big, big chain. Uh, now maybe in Toronto, yeah, maybe some places have it, but but out here in uh, out here where the uh, sunshine blows our blues away, no dice, no uh, no. And it's a good thing we got the sunshine because we got don't have the Led Zeppelin vinyl. Um, but that's okay because I'm hoping they do have the box set, and I'm hoping to get the box for my birthday. And at that point, I will talk about it some. I will talk about the set itself as well as how the music pairs across the formats and stuff. So I'm not really, I do have it though on, as with the others, I do have it on the iP iPhone, I do have it, the the iTunes version of the complete deluxe edition, have listened to it fairly regularly, have opinions on it, so, um, but I, I love Led Zeppelin 3, this is why I'm a Led Zeppelin fan, is Led Zeppelin 3, and I've said this the other week, Led Zeppelin 4 is a good album, um, Led Zeppelin 4 is a classic, probably one of the great, maybe the greatest album ever. Um, 
physical graffiti and pre presence I've grown to love a lot um, uh, over the last couple of years. Physical graffiti is another. In Through the Outdoors is a favorite from years back. Uh, and yeah, and the first album is a good rock and bluesy album. The second one's got a whole lot of love and stuff. But, but this third one just devastated me. Devastated me. Now, you got to understand, I, I listened to um, not just rock. Um, I, I listened to the classic rock, you know, the stuff that had up-tempo but had a groove to it, right? So I'm not, I was not a Black Sabbath fan. I was not an uh, Aerosmith guy or um, a lot of the harder stuff of the 70s. Uh, and this is the mid-70s, you know. Uh, although I've seen Ted Nugent in the, any number of times. I was, you know, I don't own any of his albums. I've seen him every six months for three years, I think, for three or four years. It's just the way it went. Um, but bands more locally, like Triumph, I liked. Um, and, and then Yes. And um, uh, I started with BTO. Uh, we worked from there. But, um, you know, it, even the Stones sort of, uh, yeah, I liked it, didn't like it at the time. I like them more now than I did then, I think. Um, uh, the Who I was bigger on than the Stones uh, but I also listened to, to classical music I listened to classical guitar music particularly loved Yes because I love Steve Howe's classical guitar stuff as much as anything um, and notice Triumph they do some through some classical guitar some Spanish guitar so loved that kind of music loved playing acoustic guitar loved listening to an acoustic guitar really, I was a Jim Crochet fan and I know there's, there are people gag at that but I still like Jim Crochet. Um, so I like that acoustic music. I like, I love, absolutely adore, actually, acoustic music, acoustic guitar music. Done really well. Um, whether it's classical, whether it's, you know, a mandolin. Um, I'm just so... Um, and so when I get get to Led Zeppelin 3, you know, and I've, I've seen the song as the same, so I've seen, oh, I'm, now I'm blown away by Jimmy Page guitar, but I'm blown away by Bonzo as a drummer. Um, I get the kind of electricity of the band. Then I start feeding into the albums. And four is great. Four, oh, it's got Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven, I like. Uh, and you start digging into things like going to California. Um, um, you know, yeah, draw a black, right? Well, Black Dog Rock and Roll. Um, and uh, Battle of Evermore, that sort of thing. Then you go backwards to three, and three just floored me. And 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 the funny thing is, it starts with immigrants. Like, hey, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, uh, asserting, <laughs> what's, asserting your presence with authority. Remember that? Um, how's immigrant song for asserting your presence with authority? And this is, as the critics said, the band's gone soft. They've gone soft, and they started with Immigrant Song. Never liked Immigrant Song. Um, it's one of those ones that, as in the later years, I've grown to appreciate what they actually did there. Um, immigrant Strong Song struck me as the band. Um, whenever people compare, whenever people say to me, "Oh, you're a Zeppelin fan, okay," um, did you hear Black Sabbath doing a tour? And I think, how did you make that connection? That to me, there's no connection. Whatsoever between Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. It's an idiotic leap. Um, and the reason people make that leap is a song like Immigrant Song. Immigrant Song makes them go, oh, well, Led Zeppelin's a hard rock band. Hold on, love Immigrant Song. Um, the band hates the phrase heavy metal. Immigrant Song is probably has more to do with them being called heavy metal band. All sorts of people know this band as Immigrant Song. I have a hard time getting Led Zeppelin through my wife. And I know Immigrant Song is one of the reasons. I know that. And I know when my dad, as I was a kid, when my dad would say, they're just, it sounds like a bunch of monkeys. They're just, he's screaming. He's not singing. Um, I could never defend Immigrant Song against that. I could now. I could now. And I'll tell you what I know now. What I know now is it's a song about, um, well, it's a song about the Vikings. But if you listen to to the, the beat of the, the rhythm, the pounding of the rhythm, I mean, it's meant to sound like, Vikings coming, paddling up the shore. They're in attack mode. That's what it's meant to sound like. Um, and it's actually phenomenal when you think of it that way, when you listen to it with that ear. That uh, what would, Because Vikings were known to be... It was a terrifying thing when they were coming up the river. Uh, you'd be in your little village, and, and, all of a sudden, and they were known to have a howl, and they were known to be loud, and they came 
driving up in a war party and what did it sound like? And if you imagine, want to imagine what it sounded like, it probably sounded something like immigrant song. So that's that's where. Um, uh, oh, what am I saying here? What am I thinking? That's what immigrant song is, and it's a phenomenal song of of hard rock. That kind of hard rock songs, it's it's amongst the best because it does that because it's recreating a sound I want to say from nature but you know a, a possibly a, a potentially historic sound right and we nobody really knows what these guys sounded like so we we can only imagine but but then after Ingrid song goes on to friends friends this is a pretty little song um, with lovely little words and I was I'm a sucker for sappy lyrics I really am a sucker for that sort of thing uh, and then it rolls into Celebration Day. Celebration Day, of course, if you if you watch the song, means the same. If you know the song, means the same. And I remember I started out from the song, means the same. I kind of went song, means the same, and backwards to a degree. Um, skipping a bit over physical graffiti because my brother had got physical graffiti that around that Christmas. I think the Christmas, same Christmas, I got the song, means the same. Yeah, something like that. And uh, I wasn't nuts on it. Mm. Um, like some of the songs, but not all the songs. Thoughts, you know. Mm. Um, that's, that's just, I've changed my opinion on that album too. And we'll get to that when we get to that. <laughs> hey, that interview with Robert Plant, uh, he says they have some phenomenal stuff in the physical graffiti sessions. He says that's what he's most excited about is the physical graffiti sessions. And Jimmy said, right, that he's really, the most, he's, he's most excited about the present sessions, the stuff they got. Some remixes there, alternate mixes they have there. So we have some really good stuff to coming up. Okay, fast. so Celebration Day, you know, is rock and roll to Celebration Day. Don't like the album version as much as the live version, but you know the song, and you're going to go, okay, this is great. Then, since I've been loving you, Jaws. Since I've been loving you, Jaws. Oh, my goodness gracious. And I just turned my back to the camera and the microphone, in case you're wondering what happened. And I have my reason. I have my reason. And I'm, I don't, I'm not going to go with it. Um, I meant to do this before. I had... Uh, um, oh, damn. I had the writer... One of the very first podcasts I had uh, a fella in who wrote a book. Uh, he, he shared the writing of the book um, with his partner. And I know him because I'm Facebook friends with him. I'm still over here. I'm talking over here. Talking over here. How do you like this, eh? Anyway. And uh, Ralph. Ralph Hewitt. Hewlett or Hewitt? Hewitt, I think it is. Um, so Ralph Ralph came on and we, we talked about the show. And he was great. Very gracious guest. Loved to have him on. I meant to get him on again. Uh, actually, talk some other stuff. But there's a line in their book. Uh, in Ralph Hewitt's book. Um, and I, do I have the internet up? I do not have the internet up, so I'm not even going to bother trying. Um, but there's a line in the book. Some of the lines that if you're wondering, um, if you're wondering who's the best guitarist in the world, listen to the solo on "Since I've Been Loving You" and wonder no more. Something along those lines. And uh, I couldn't agree more. I simply could not agree more. That intro is devastating. Um, the guitar playing throughout is miraculous. The solo, when he rocks into that solo, playing 64th, I've had the music in front of me, and it's like 64th notes, and you go, oh my goodness gracious. Um, it's so phenomenal. It's so breathtaking, emotional. Um, I, 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 to this day, I, I can't get over listening since I've been loving you in the right environment, in the right place. I mean, driving down the road, it comes on, and your wife's talking to that. Or, you know, yeah, I'm at work and I'm kind of half paying attention. No big deal. It's just since I've been loving you. But if you sit down and, you know, just put it on, put on the record, or if I'm in the car by myself and I crank it up and allow myself to really listen to it, to this day, it devast it's devastating. It's so good. It's so impactful. It's so powerful. It may be the greatest rock and roll song ever. Um, 
Right? It's just so, so, so knock your socks off good. And as a young, as a, you know, 15, 16 year old, 14 year olds just starting out on guitar, I can tell you, I thought, I thought it, it, would, it would be unthinkable to be able to play like that. Now, I kind of can now. I can play most of the song, actually. Um, having never played it in a band, I've never learned the solo properly. Uh, certainly the intro I've learned, certainly most of the rest of the stuff. But you get, you can tell you're actually playing with other guys, you need to really learn it, memorize it. You don't bother with, okay, i got to learn that 64th note where I'm in. That's right. So, but I can certainly do it now, um, to some degree of competence. <laughs> to some degree of competence. And like a report card, the kids come home, right? Brian can play guitar with some degree of confidence. Um... <laughs> But uh, at the time, I thought, nobody, nobody could ever play a guitar like that. Um, it was so, and I, and I, you know, it was an almost couldn't get past it, couldn't get over it. And then outros into out on the tiles, out on the tiles. I actually knew before I got into Led Zeppelin. It, it was one, and now three must have been around somewhere. I went out with a girl, I think, and she liked that song particularly. And we would listen, we would actually listen to this album. But it was you'd skip songs and stuff, right? And and out of the tiles was um, was the one we used to love. We used to sing together. So uh, it's just a happy, bouncy, happy, lovely song uh, of a kind that wasn't necessarily common at the time. That's the thing. It was a kind of a downer period in history. Um, and people weren't doing. You were either doing. You were either a pop band, right? You were. We talked about joked about the Partridge Family the other week. You're either a pop band doing Come On, Get Happy, uh, um, oh, 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 it's magic, or you're a rock band doing Since I've Been Loving You, uh, or you're a folk band doing Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. Um, you know what I mean? You, you know, the Stones are doing Street Fighting Man, The Who were doing Won't Get Fooled Again. People weren't doing happy, uppity music, unless you were just a pissy-ass little pop band. Um, and, and then out came, you know, and there's Led Zeppelin doing this poppy little, but they were doing, and like they often did when they rolled into just doing a pop song or just doing a nice little song, happy little song, or a little ditty of some sort, they did it better than other people. <laughs> and it's one of the things that makes them so, their, their pissy ass little songs are so good. Out of the Tiles is a great little song. What a great guitar lick that is. That is a great, and that's what I've been, if I had a pick, I'd play it for you, but... Uh, I'm not seeing it, but, but you know that whole that's that's one I've actually been learning guitar up by the way. yeah you know that that whole kind of finger pick it with the right hand sorry but it's, it's a little sloppy but that's just a great little run great little lit great happy little song um and then at the end and this is one of those guitar player things i could i got the book eventually i got a book on and you could read the notes and and i, I kind of worked through out of the tunnels but at the end he goes into this whole other thing and this is one of these zeppelin things um now it's really just <laughs> You know, it's just an E chord. E to a G, E to a G, E to a G, E, A, G, right? So all it is, and he's playing the open E note there, and he's just kind of... But it didn't sound like anything anybody else was doing. Um, it's just a simple thing. It's really easy to play. Um, but it's, again, it's one of those things you listen to and go, how is he even doing that? That's, that's a bizarre sounding thing. Um... I promise that's the last thing we could talk about. Um, and then, you know, there's side one. Oh, that's, Jesus Christ. We just went from immigrant song, from Vikings raiding to a nice little friends to Celebration Day. Another kind of a happy, another happy poppy type song. Uh, although very different than anything else out there to Since I've Been Loving You to Out in the Tiles. Um, what a bounce around. Oh, by the way. This is their soft album. The band's gone soft. Immigrant song, Celebration Day, Since I've Been Loving You, Out in the Tiles. Band's gone soft. That's what, like, Rolling Stone was saying. Um, 
the next time you're reading Rolling Stone and think they're right. Yeah, right. Never. Not then. Don't give them the credit now. Um, so anyway, side two. So then you flip it over. Side two. Gallows Pole. Love Gallows. Gallows Poles. And those are one of those ones that just... It's hard to get over. It's so layered and so textured and so simple. And you understood right away, this is an old song. This wasn't... Like, even at a 14-year-old, oh, this is an old folk song or something. This is something. This isn't... Um, this wasn't written in 1970. This was written in 1870, right? The, you talk about the hangman. Who, you know, there's no hangman anymore. There's no riding your, or anything like that. So you understood it was an old one. Um, but they did something with it that was so, it was so folk, but so rock. And that's, when they pulled out the acoustic guitars, they never stopped being a rock band. And it was, it's one of the most uniquely interesting things about them. Um, they never stopped having that kind of energy the drive that a rock band has. Um, Tangerine, now Tangerine falls back a little. It's a nicer little song. Um, okay, then maybe they've lost a bit of that rock band drive. Because <laughs> there's always, 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 but 99% of the time they had that. Uh, when, when didn't they have the rock band drive? That, it, it's an interesting question, right? Like Tangerine, uh, Thank You, Going to California, All My Love. Uh, Ryer maybe. And that's probably pretty close to it, right? That they didn't have that real push. Uh, that's the way. Um, so, so we got a nice little step. Step in the middle. You know, side two goes Gallows Pole Tangerine. That's the way Brian Ryer stopped. That is, by the way, the soft part of the album. Um, that's the way. It's always been one of those. It's so pretty. It's so layered. It's so. And I love Robert Plant's words in it, and I have no idea what he's singing about. Uh, but it feels very romantic. It's always felt to me very romantic. Oh, very touching. Uh, but I have no idea. It could be. It, it, something's going way over my head there, too. And always, always has. But it's such a uniquely, a unique sounding guitar part. It's such a pretty sounding guitar part. And... Uh, and the end, now it's in a different tuning, so I can't pull up my guitar and just show you. But at the end, they do some stuff at the end with the guitars. It's so intrinsically simple, yet so, um, so remarkable that somebody actually thought of it. It's one of those sorts of things where you go, how did he ever come up with this? But it, it, in fact, as you're playing in that tuning, your hand kind of wants to fall in. It's easy to play. It it's really fits in the hand nicely. But it's it's a unique pattern anyway. Um, it's one of those things. Bronier Stomp, I always dug. I've always dug it. This is this is a rock guitarist playing an acoustic like a rock guitar, right? This is uh, the the fancy picking. Uh, always, always, always dug this song. Always have, uh, and did not learn until not that many years ago that it was about his dog. <laughs> um, Saying it to a few girls, none of which have married me. That tells you everything you want to know, maybe. Uh, of course, maybe I wasn't into marrying them. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, and then, of course, finish off with Hats Off to Roy Harper. I did a few weeks back, uh, a few months back, I mentioned, you know, what songs did you think were maybe weaker songs in the Zeppelin catalog? And Hats Off to Roy Harper came up. Um, I like it. Uh, I've always liked that old, the, the old bluesy stuff, and I, I got even then what they were trying to do. And I think if you listen to um, Keys of the Highway, Trouble on My Mind, which is from the same sessions, um, you get a better picture of what they were what they were up to, what they were doing, what they were trying to do. Uh, but it's a devastatingly good album. It's just, To me, Hats Off to Roy Harper just caps it in such an interesting way. It's They've done the power rock. They did the power, the unbelievable blues. They did the... the Almost everything you can do with an acoustic band or an acoustic guitar, right? Gallows Pole, the old folk song with banjos and mandolins. That's the way, the pretty little song, Brian Ross Stomp, the country song, Tangerine, the ballad. Um, you know, Friends, kind of the straight folk song. Um, the modern folk, which is compared to Gallows Pole, is the old folk. You know, that sort of thing. You got a happy song, you got a blues song, you got the power song. And then Hats Off to Roy Harper comes in with this old blues. It's... Tops the album nicely. It's it. Um, 
You know, there's there's no at no point in this album do you think well, that kind of sounds a bit like the other song, <laughs> right? Whereas um, this is an example, and, I, and I'm not not implying, you know, but but Black Dog to Rock and Roll can be a bit interchangeable. Um, you know, they, they have a very similar sound to them. Um, similar tempo, similar feel, similar guitar sound. Same goes um, um, Battle of Evermore, Stairway to Heaven, which, which you know, is, has been um, Dave Lewis and Type It Loose on the 40th anniversary of that album talked about it being um, um, like uh, uh, Battle of Evermore being like a prelude to Stairway to Heaven. Um, they fit together very well. Nothing on this album fits together very well. It's not a comprehensive unit as an album, right? It's, it's a collection of songs more than that. And that's maybe its downfall. But there's no, at no point do you go, um, you know, you, you don't see immigrant songs like Celebration Day or, or Celebration Day and Adam the Tiles I compared. But I only compare it because they're up-tempo, happy songs. Not because they sound anything similar. Gallows Pole and, and Friends are folk songs, but one's a modern folk, it's kind of an Arlo Guthrie-style folk song or, or Crosby Sells Nash, more like. Uh, Gallows Pole is an old folk song. They've given a modern touch to it, but it still feels like an old song. Tangerine's a ballad. That's the way is more... Not a ballad so much as... I don't know. Maybe more like a traditional ballad, a story song. You know, it's, um, it's just an album that's so, so much going on with it. Um, and, 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 and I do think it's a transitional album from two to four, and... Four is a more complete unit, right? It's uh, the Black Dog Rock and Roll meld together, the, the Prelude and Stairway, Black, uh, Battle of Admore and Stairway. Um, you know, and, and, and side, well, side two is more, maybe more song, 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 uh, a little less. But, I mean, side one's, I, I've had this conversation before, side one of uh, four begins and ends with just Robert Plant singing. Uh, as if you take out that little echoey thing that they do at the beginning of Black Dog. Um, but it begins with, hey, hey, mama said the way you move. It ends with, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. That's the album. So that's, you know, it, it starts, it builds, it crescendos. It's, and we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. But three doesn't do that. And that may be why four is the better album. But I think the songs on this are just so devastating. And, and there are moments on this album that are better than anything anybody's ever done, I think. It, it really is that good that close that close to brilliant and they hit brilliant you know nine months later with or whenever they recorded four um but they were really they were touching on it here i, I really honestly think that and and yeah I, I this album is so good okay so then then we have the extras the 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 stuff that's not on the album, <laughs> the bonus material, um, and the bonus material goes this way: immigrant song, alternate mix, uh, friends no vocal, celebration day, alternate mix, since I've been loving you, rough mix, bathroom sound, no vocal, gallows pole, rough mix, that's the way, rough mix, Jennings farm blues, keys of the highway, trouble in my mind, rough mix, immigrant song, alternate mix, got some different stuff going on in the guitar, particularly in effects in terms of effects. Robert does some different vocally stuff, but it's not entirely different than than immigrant song. It's I wouldn't say this is a and and I've had this discussion a bit online with some people, but I think there's nothing here that's that's comprehensively must have to my mind. Other than since I've been loving you, we'll get there. Uh, but immigrant songs, it's it's an interesting, it's a historical look, it's an interesting look, it's an interesting retake of the song. Same goes for um, most of the alternate mixes. They're interesting. They have some minor differences. You, if you're listening superficially, you might not even pick up the differences. Gallo's pole is different in that it it sounds like it's the basic track and then the different vocal. Um, but it doesn't have you know the banjo coming in and that sort of stuff. It's missing a lot of the layering that went on. Um, but friends, no vocal, so it's just the vo it's the track. It's the track. No vocal. It's interesting to listen to some of the stuff that's going on in the drums there. It's interesting to hear what's going on. When I get to Friends in my guitar book, I will no doubt pull that out because it'll be easier to learn the guitar part. But, yeah. 
Celebration Day alternate mix. It's just a different variation of Celebration Day again. It's 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 the same but different. Uh, there are some minor differences. Saints Up and Loving You is very different. This is called a rough mix instead of an alternate mix. This is probably closer to a an alternate mix. Really, it's it's a it's a completely different take, and it's a different solo, and it's got some very different vocal stuff, and it's very interesting to listen to where they were going with it, and it's. Almost, you could imagine them if they had put this on the album and you never heard the, the, the source that you know, you'd. I, I think I would probably still be as, as blown away at the time. I think it would still be as, as big a number with Zappa fans as it is now. Um, it, it is an exceptional version. You could have gone one or the other on this and, and made the fans happy. Uh, and I'm glad I, I want to have the, the, the bonus material on this album just for that alone it's really really good uh, okay bathroom sounds is out on the tiles without the vocals again it's interesting bonds is doing different stuff on this and it's a great little guitar line but it's also verse chorus verse chorus type of song so it's not you know, like since i've been loving you the guitar does something different the band does something different each time through they don't in in out of the tiles. so it's 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 interesting for for a minute or a minute and a half it's not interesting for three minutes to me Gallows Pole Rough Mix, basically a variation, again, a little, little more, um, little less instrumentation, just a little more held back um, than the album. A little, little less stuff, a little less produced, is the word I was looking for. Same goes for That's The Way. That's The Way has some different mandolin stuff on it, some slightly different vocal takes, uh, got the same feel. Um, and, and quite nice. And I'm, I, I'm really going to have to, it's one of these... I, you know, I, I'm almost going to have to go, especially the, the Immigrant Song Celebration Day, Since I've Been Loving You, Gallows Pole, That's the Way, and listen to them four or five times, just those songs, and see how how I feel about them. Because I'm, you kind of hear them, you know, I haven't what I haven't done, I haven't got the album, I haven't read, so I haven't sat with the headphones and really studied this. I kind of let's do it at work, I kind of let's do it in the car. So I think they need more time, on, more time and effort on my behalf. I'm hoping to get some of that time in the nearish future. Um, and Jennings Farm Blues is Brian Yarstomp electric version. It was originally tried out as an electric song, and this is it without the vocals. Uh, and I would, I wish the vocals were on it. I would, I think I would love this if it had the vocals. <laughs> That's what I think. I think if Robert was singing on this, even if he was singing something slightly different than what we know, I, I think I would love it. And then Keys to the Highway, Trouble on My Mind, another good reason for owning the deluxe material. This is a great song. I love this. I think I like it more than Hats Off to Roy Harper. Um, I suspect the reason it didn't make it onto the album is because it's another acoustic song and they didn't want to go five acoustic songs on that. But that would have been an, actually a very interesting thing to do, to take that second side and make it all acoustic. Um, and and that bluesy acoustic is the last song that of, for uh, Keys to the Highway, Trouble on Mine. It would have been very interesting. Um, and I think maybe made, might make it more of a comprehensive album the way we talked about it. Have they done that? I, I think. But you got to respect the decisions they made in 1970, and they don't know, and they're just trying to get an album out the door, right? This One of the things we, as fans, can often sit around going, oh, well, maybe if they'd have done that, maybe they'd have done this. You know, these were working musicians just trying to get songs out the door. Um So, you know, but I, yeah, it's, I can't say it enough how much I like this. Okay, so I also have as a front of that 8 track cassette. 8 track on cassette. 8 track on cassette. Cassette, same running order as the album. 8 track change. We talked about this last week, and it's an interesting thing to look at. I talked about it two weeks ago, I think, with two, right? Um, here's how the track listing goes. And excuse me if you're watching a video. I have the thing, I'm holding it way out here. You can see. I'm, kind of, I'm actually holding it way down. I'm drawing my glasses. And it's a bit of a darkish room. Mm. Uh, immigrant Song, Bra on Your Stomp, that's different. Friends. Celebration Day, Out of the Tiles, Hats Off to Roy Harper. Gallows Pole, that's the way, Since I've Been Loving You, Tangerine. So, to make it simple, um, immigrant, starts with Immigrant Song, yes. Between Friends and Immigrant Song, you get Bronyar Stomp. And then you get Celebration Day and Out on the Tile. So Since I've Been Loving You, he gets Take It Out. 
right? And hats off to Harper gets moved up under out in the tiles. Just lost the video feed, folks. Just lost the video now. Um, this is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. We made it longer. So, But if you watched it on YouTube and then came to this, it's almost over. Uh, yeah, and then, so since I've been loving you, Tangent, and like I said, I'm going to have to listen to this. Um, I'm interested in the Gallows Pole, That's the Way, as, as track three. Gallows Pole, That's the Way. And that, that may be a very good... Uh, just since I've been loving you. Gallows Pole, That's the Way, Since I've Been Loving You. That's an interesting run. But that's that's how that reads on the 8-track. That's how they released it at the time on the 8-track. Uh, okay, I'm going to wrap at that. That's it for Ramble on Radio. Episode 6-6, six, six, no third 6. Check rambleonradio.com for notes on this week's podcast. Let's up the news, reviews, and any links I might mention during the show. Follow Ramble on Radio on Facebook. Conversations are going on right now. Google Plus and at Ramble on Blog on Twitter. You can subscribe to Ramble on Radio through iTunes. Leave a review, listen on Spreaker, be sure to follow. And check it out at Ramble on Radio on YouTube. You can get... Up until about a minute and a half ago, you can watch the video. Last week's video is posted, by the way. It's up there. Thanks for listening to Ramble on Radio, episode 66. And keep it cool, babies. And I do say, what ho, it's Brian again. Forgot to mention, not going to be doing a podcast the next two weeks. 67 is uh, will come approximately the 24th of July will be the date of the next podcast. So have a good couple of weeks. I'm taking a few weeks off. I'm doing R&R. &R. Uh, I'm going to refresh, rewind, and uh, uh, I'll be back at you on, a, on or about July 24th. I will talk to you then. Have a good July, folks. And as always, when I do these sorts of things, thank you so much for listening through the year. Thank you so much for listening the times you do. And uh, just enjoy yourself. It's a great time. To, it's a great time of the year. It's a great time to be alive. And enjoy. Switch off the internet. Through Led Zeppelin email list and stuff, I've known Wyatt since before I even did this. Um, but he pointed out that uh, I, I used the phrase uh, Celtic this week, and uh, he went and checked it out, whether it was Celtic or Celtic. And uh, my only defense, and the truth is, I'll go both ways on this. Uh, sometimes, some weeks I'll say Celtic, some weeks I'll say Celtic. I can tell you that my grumpy Irish father, who, um, uh, if he doesn't know it, it's not meant to be known. Let's put it that way. He's, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you want to see what he looks like, go to the dictionary, look up Know It All. Um, that's my grumpy Irish father. And he will assure you that nobody says it in Ireland that, um, uh, in fact, only those stupid Americans, stupid, stupid, stupid Americans, um, would dare say Celtic, that it's, it's a North American thing, it's not an Irish thing, that the Irish would never, ever, would not know what you were talking about, uh, etc., etc. Um, if you actually want an entertaining Saturday night, Bring a bottle of whiskey to my house. One of the weekends when my dad is down visiting. Uh, he likes Irish, your Canadian whiskey, not Irish whiskey, in case you're thinking. Um, he doesn't drink. This is Brian. Call me a simple guy who lives from day-to-day -day gardener, coming to you from the ray of sunshine that melts my frown and blows my blues away 
in scenic Hesper, Ontario, and you are listening to Ramble on Radio, episode number 66, one six away from the number of the beast. We are one six away, too bad, it's it's, it's the, uh, um, or good thing I suppose, it, it's it's the tough six, <laughs> it's it's the big six, uh, can't see that there's a reason they kicked him out of Ireland, uh, but, uh, by the way, Battery's going down really bad on this uh, video. We may not get much. Um, in which case, I have to find a new solution. I'm not buying batteries every week. Um, yeah, so come on down. Bring the whiskey. Get them a couple. And get a couple in them with uh, some rye. Two, maybe three. Uh, maybe start with two. And then, uh, then tell them, no, you disagree. You think it's Celtic. And... Uh, It'll be an entertaining hour, I promise. <laughs> so that's, I tend to go Celtic. I, I actually think Celtic. I hear it Celtic all the time, on, you know, on the radio and stuff. Um, but I, I've had it a bit beat into me Celtic. So I kind of intentionally went Celtic uh, when I talked about it last week. And uh, and, and it's funny because I did think about it. Oh, well, maybe it's Celtic. I, I, I know, I'm not sure exactly what the honest the way it's supposed to be. I just tell you why I go that way. The next time we're talking about it, I could very well say Celtic. Don't email me and start going on uh, and telling me I, was <laughs> I just use both. I do. Um, Boob and uh, um, that's and follow Ramble on Radio on Facebook. The Facebook page was a bit alive this week. Uh, some stuff going on. Go to Google Plus. You can also see the YouTube video on Google Plus. Apparently, it's all owned by Google now. Um, I think everything's, you know, YouTube and, 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 well, Google's owned by Google and then, uh, um, Google plus and your car. Uh, and I believe they hold your mortgage and, um, uh, there's something else that's Google, but yeah, Google's everything now, right? So, uh, it, it's getting crazy out there. Um, uh, and also go to, go to Twitter, follow at ramble on blog on Twitter, um, and, uh, you know, talk to me, have a conversation with me. Uh, like I said, the Facebook page has been fairly alive this week. Um, one of the points I wanted to get to, um, 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 uh, Zep Cowboy, go to Zep Cowboy, I, you know, I'll have to link up to it. Zep Cowboy at blogspot.com, I believe, is Wyatt. Wyatt is, um, uh, he's been a listener since episode one. He's like, after episode one, he emailed me. And I've actually known him because I believe after, once we hit episode 666, the uh, the entire episode will implode and I'm going to have to start over again um, uh, as a Genesis podcast, as a Phil Collins podcast, actually. It would have to start over as. So let's, uh, so we're at 66. We're a long way away from that 666, thank goodness. Uh, and this is Ramble on Radio, the only dedicated Led Zeppelin podcast, not Phil Collins, the only dedicated Led Zeppelin podcast on this or any other known internets. Be sure to go to rambleonradio.com for all your Led Zeppelin news and any links I mentioned during the show. You can subscribe to Ramble on Radio through iTunes. If you go to iTunes, leave a review. Um, give a star, give three stars, give five stars, and it just it helps with the it's product placement. It helps with the, the, the uh, podcast's placement. Um, you can go to Spreaker, follow uh, Ramble on Radio on Spreaker. Um, same thing, helps with placement. And check it out at Ramble on Radio on YouTube. Also, I am Brian Davin on YouTube, but that's just the, the audio. It comes from Spreaker, and I can't seem to turn it off. But if you go to Ramble on Radio, I've had the last couple up. I'm recording again, I'm videoing again um, on YouTube.